Welcome back, everyone, to the innards of Jabba's palace as we continue on in Super Return of the Jedi. Are you sick and tired of hearing Super at the end of every title? <laughs> it's so super. That's all right. Most Nintendo fans were, and then they got even more pissed when they had to hear 64 in every title. <laughs> Sorry, there was a craze. <clears throat> Nintendo thought that that was a thing. To call every game something. Super something, something super. yeah. Super um, something or just 64? So like Super Mario, Super... Uh, there was actually a point where Legend of Zelda, A Link, a Link to the Past was called Super Zelda. Super uh, Zelda. Super Zelda. Um, I don't think that. Super Metroid. Kept that title. Uh, jeez. There, there's a lot. There's a lot that kept those titles. F-Zero was originally supposed to be like Super Future Racing or something like that. Yeah, Nintendo was really insistent on the Super title. Yeah, it's good for branding, I guess. It's good for branding, but what they didn't count on is that unfortunately they had their most of their audience were kids with attention spans of nil. <laughs> and so they never counter or they never encountered the concept that their that their uh their buyers would be annoyed by it, for lack of a better term. Which most of their buyer base was. Now we look back at it fondly. Because it is kind of fun. So, well, sometimes the moniker was never there and it just kind of got retroactively put yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Like, like Superman 64. It's just mm -hmm. called, Su like, Adventures of no, Superman No, no, yeah, it's, it's, um, no, I think it's like Superman the Animated Series or something. No, no, no Adventures of Superman. You're right. Yeah. It was, a, it was, um, I want to say, was it the Amazing Adventure? No, it wasn't. It was, I think it was, it was just, just the Adventures, the Adventures of, Superman. of Superman. Because it was supposed to be, you know, an offshoot of the animated series. And so at that point, like, they wanted to get people into it. And then eventually it just got dubbed Superman 64. Yeah. Which is why everybody laughed their asses off when the AVGN came out with Superman for the Commodore 64. <laughs> All right, so uh, I can't remember what this monster is actually called, but as you can see, he's made oh, short work of. Oh, that was easy. Was that yes. the Rancor? No. No. No, Just technically we are in Java's palace. We haven't been cast out yet. Right. So here we go. Greetings. I am Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker. Actually, no, you're Luke. Greetings. I am Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker. Release Han Solo to me and I will do you no harm, Jabba. There will be no bargain, Jedi. You'll regret this. I'm sure. I'm sure. What they don't tell you is that C-3PO is supposed to be translating. <laughs> All right. So the next area that we have is the Rancor Pit. You'd think we take Luke in here, but believe it or not, Luke creates a bit of a problem in this area. Really? Massive slowdown. <laughs> yes. I even tried it out when I was recording this. And yes, it was massive slowdown because of the saber. Like, the saber is amazing because of its jump, spin, all around, and it can kill everything. But in this area, you guys are going to see slowdown is a huge problem. Because of the sheer amount of enemies that are in the Rancor Pit. You know, I almost want to say, George, you, you, you got it wrong. Because the way that Sculpture Software saw it was that the Rancor is basically its own ecosystem. And so at that point, you're going to have lots of these geysers and hazards as well as random monsters uh, so uh, i don't know I mean, it's not like it's just some random monster that happens to be below the palace i think it's meant to be like a you know a, like a lion's den or yeah, something. yeah it's supposed to be like a coliseum kind of thing yeah um and so at that point like so but here's the thing you can't make a level based off of a coliseum so sculpture software did the best with what they could you can make a boss fight out of it <laughs> you could and they do, actually. So so don't take this the wrong way. They the Rancor is the boss. So you get you do get the, the epic Rancor moment. But I'm also going to be titling this episode, and it's appropriate, Rancorvania. And the main reason being is you can already kind of see the problem of this level. Is that it really feels like a Metroidvania level. Uh, you will backtrack because you will get lost. Yeah. And uh, in fact, uh, just a little bit of a spoiler. The, pretty much this entire part is the Rancor. It's the Rancor pit. Because it took so long to get through here. Not only because of hardware issues that I'm still fixing, but just because of the sheer amount of time that has to be spent in this area. 
Oh, it's ridiculous. You're like, I just wish I can get to the boss and be done with mm -hmm. it. Yeah, no, eventually you get to that point. Because you don't even know... It, it, there's not, like, really good markers or anything like that that you know you're going forward. It's just, oh, you know, there's hazards here, there's monsters there, and everywhere there's these little little torches and little skulls in the background. So you have no frame of reference. So I am going to go back and forth just a little bit, but that's okay. We'll make it work. Thankfully, we can also get some blaster upgrades because the old gun system from Super Star Wars still works here. Just only on Han. Believe it or not, and I, I think this was something that we got at, that we're going to get asked for part one, is can you switch to blasters with Luke? I believe the way that this works in the game is he is lightsaber only. So if you were hoping to be able to pull out a blaster while playing as Luke, I do not think you can. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, because by that point, the kids were using the lightsaber with Luke. They weren't using the blaster. In fact, Luke was probably the most played character in, in the game because everybody loved that that saber swirl and and it takes care of a lot of stuff. It's just unfortunately in this game, it creates a lot of massive slowdown in overpopulated areas like this. But hey, look, you get baby rancors. Nice. Baby rancors. Mm -hmm. So now you know that the rancor in the pit is a mommy. We're guessing, we hope. It's like a star. It's like that Star Trek situation where uh, Kirk hits some uh, some alien in the knee, and then he finds out that the knee is actually that alien's crotch. <laughs> so. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. I love that scene. It's from Star Trek Six, and and somebody else comes up and goes, "Not everybody has their reproductive organs where humans have them." <laughs> and it was like, "Oh, oh, his dick was in his knee." <laughs> So now you, you kind of felt bad and you, you kind of called Kirk a dick. That's all right, though. He, he got it in the end. Okay, so while we're actually making our way through here, we have gotten an interesting Star Wars question uh, that I think we, we need to address right off. Sure. Rise of Skywalker is out. Yeah. Um, Did Rise of Skywalker change any of our best, worsts? Uh, in movie lineup, because we, we've actually answered these in other Star Wars related games like Lego Star Wars and Super Star Wars, to name a few. Hmm. Um, did Rise of Skywalker, like, it, did it raise some movies? Did it lower some movies? Is it the worst on the list for you? Um, just something to consider. And I'll let Alex kind of go first, because I think a lot of people were wondering, because with Last Jedi, how, what what uh, Rise of Skywalker does uh, to, I, to your worst list. To be honest, I don't even remember my whole ranks but uh i suppose just think i, I remember that you and me hate both equally hated attack of the clones i don't hate attack of the clones hate is too strong for attack of the clones i think okay. it's just i would say because i'm not one of those guys who hates the prequels at all i'd say attack of the clones is the weakest of the prequel trilogy yes. but it's i think that's where we had an agreement attack right. of the clones is the weakest uh I suppose I would say elevate Attack of the Clones above. By, by the way, guys, your screen's not lagging. This is the slowdown of this yeah. area. Jeez. Yes, it's it's, gonna, it's bad. Even be... even the emulator can't keep track. <laughs> and by the way, yes, we are playing this via emulator. Yeah. So I suppose I would elevate Attack of the Clones above both Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker. What was that? I would so... uh, I would put yeah I would elevate Attack of the Clones above both. The Last Jedi and above okay. Rise of Skywalker. But which one would you put lower, Last Jedi or Rise of Skywalker? <sighs> probably Last. See, that, see that's, a, that's of, a hard one. Yeah, probably Rise of Skywalker. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Because I thought you were about to say Last Jedi. It's like, okay, well, yeah. it's, it still keeps the crown. For all the problems The Last Jedi has, I've got to at least give it credit for being visually entertaining and visually stimulating. Okay. Where Rise of Skywalker... The more I've thought about it, the more Rise of Skywalker comes off of comes off as the Justice League for Star Wars. <laughs> and when I say Justice League, I mean like the the la the live action Zack Snyder slash Josh Whedon hybrid the studio mangled out. Yeah, because you could because that's a movie where it and same with la the same with last. So what you're Rise basically saying is God. that you want the 
You want the Snyder cut of Rise of Skywalker? <laughs> yeah. Well, I want, <laughs> or I guess in this case, I want the Trevor O cut, the one the, that he the Trevor O cut, or or, <laughs> no, or uh, rather the crap, uh, the JJ cut, the, the, JJ. the one where he wasn't able to put in all the stuff he wanted. Yeah. It's a. You so can tell if people it's a are movie. wondering why why we're cutting a lot at this point, remember I'm having a hardware issue with the way I'm recording this, and so unfortunately. I only got like, I got to, to work on this level in seven to nine minute increments. And then just keep what I could get. Uh, because that after that point, my, the, the video on the, uh, emulator that I'm using would cut out. And it's like, oh, well, now I have no video and I have no audio, so I guess I'm done. But anyway, continue, sorry. Yeah, it's just sort of that case where like like Justice League, Rides of Skywalker is that the worst example of movie by committee where they're mm. trying to haphazardly patch it back together because they've had so many problems behind the scenes. Yes, or or in, in the case of Rise of Skywalker, they have to fix what the previous previous movie broke. Yeah. Which I guess you could also implement with <coughs> with Justice League. However, I would make the argument of movies rather than movie because you, you still had the issues of both Batman v Superman and Man of Steel. Yeah. Not so much with Wonder Woman. Um, pe people were, actually, no, 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 Wonder Woman had come out before Justice League. Right. So yeah, that, that was like, people had momentum with that. So that being said, Andrea, what did the Rise of Skywalker do to your best and worst Star Wars films? Films. Because here's the thing, I think on, on the panel that we have here, Alex is the one that disliked it. Mm -hmm. We walked away. We and, and still to this day, I I can see it has problems, but I'm like, I'm glad I'm I'm glad I saw it. I'm glad I saw it in theaters. I glad I, I'm glad I got that closure, etc. So where 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 do you stand, Andrea? On Rise of Skywalker? Yes. Where do it, is it like? Where does it stand on your view of the Star Wars films? Is it <laughs> the best, the worst? What did what did it change, etc. I thought it was nice. Just it finally came to a closure, you know. Of, okay. Of the Skywalker, you know, lineage and stuff like that, and but I I think it did fine. I mean. Okay. So at that point, like, what what would you say is your worst Star Wars film? Worst Star Wars, <laughs> or just yes. the one you like the least? The one the the one you like the least. Um. Or two D two. Yeah, believe it or not, R two D two works as uh, checkpoints in this game. <laughs> you go save R two, that means you got a checkpoint. I would say probably my least one that you know that was entertaining was probably uh, um, episode seven. Oh, you so the Force Awakens was mm -hmm. that for you? It wasn't like my most favorite, you know. Like it wasn't one of my favorites, but you know. That's interesting, actually. Mm -hmm. Like you, you might actually be in the same camp as like Aldo. Aldo really didn't like the Force Awakens, <laughs> just because of all the recycled elements. Ah, uh, uh, look, more death and destruction. It's okay. We're we're making it work. But hey, I got blaster power, so blaster power. So now I'm upgraded to flame. Hopefully, I will be able to get to at least Seeker by the time I get to the boss. I don't know. I guess it was a tie between, probably a tie between Force Awakens and, uh, um, maybe Phantom Menace. Really? Mm -hmm. So, so where would Last Jedi be in this? Because like, for most, for most people making lists on YouTube, like Last Jedi is the guaranteed last. Why? Uh, because of the agenda that was basically shoved down our throats from it. I don't know. I think I only just cared when we got Luke Skywalker back. <laughs> okay. Well, it, I mean, here's the thing. Like, I'm pretty sure if I could actually show you that cut, I would. Which is basically the... They they take out all the scenes that involve Finn. And you only deal with the Ray luke storyline. Mm -hmm. And it, it makes the movie better. And it flows better. Maybe that's probably the reason why, you know. It's like... A lot of people didn't like that story. A lot of people... <laughs> And, and I'm actually also going to say this. Uh, Kelly Marie Tran is, 
I, I think embellishes a little bit on all the people that hate her. Because everybody I talk to is just like, no, I don't hate Kelly Marie Tran. I don't think it ever... I, I like know. at that point, Star Wars fans, like I, as, as far as the character Rose, they're indifferent. They're like, I don't see a reason to care about the character, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I guess that's me. I don't hate. Yeah, I don't know it, if I could no, say I hate the character. I just don't. I, I, I agree just, with what we said in, in the podcast is like we were all indifferent to her. It, just, we, we had no reason to care. The character just doesn't have a purpose. No. Yeah. It, it, and in some cases, the, the, not the, the character, but the writing put put uh the the rose character in a place where a lot of people feel like she kind of wrecked finn and and the specific scene they're talking about is when uh she saves him from killing himself yeah that was a dumb moment <laughs> that, that was stupid like if you're gonna do it just do it but well, it's disney and they but it's disney you knew they weren't gonna do it yeah they can't kill anybody. they can't pull that trigger well i think it you know if disney when... lost its balls in the mid-2000s is that, is that towards John Boyega? <laughs> I said Disney. No, okay, not I was John Boyega. Say, I didn't hear the Disney part. And I'm like, wow, that's harsh towards John Boyega. I like the guy. John, he's fine. Oh yeah, especially like po I think he's actually taken. Um, I, I think he's taken like some of that criticism as better than most. I, I'll actually give John a little bit of credit here. I think he took a lot of the Finn criticism better than than most of the other characters. I mean, Finn and. Uh, Rise of Skywalker probably was the best part of it, but the first mm -hmm. two films with him, I just didn't, you know, care for. And, and the reason I, I'm, I'm saying that, and, and you guys will probably agree on this. Um, did you hear about the, the controversy surrounding John Boyega shortly after Rise of Skywalker? There's so much controversy. You'll have to be specific. <laughs> just like the many elephants in the room. Um, so you remember in the movie, like he was going to tell Ray something. Oh, uh, yeah, that. That bugged me. I forgot to bring it up in our review. So at that point, yeah, it, well, I mean, it's it's definitely an unanswered question that, that this movie left us with, right? Yeah. Well, somebody actually went out to ask uh, John Boyega, and I think they also tried to ask JJ what, what he was going to say. And John's theory on it, because I don't think they had a definitive answer, was he was going to tell her that he was he thought he was force sensitive. Oh, yeah. Instead of what a lot of people, in, including a lot of naysayers, thought where he was going to confess his love for Ray. I mean, that's what I was figuring. I was waiting Kind of thing. It. And I actually was in the other camp. I thought he was going to tell her that, like, he thinks he's force sensitive. He thinks he's a Jedi. Uh, because at that point, it would make sense with what they did with, with Finn's character throughout the movie. Is like, maybe he thinks that this is happening and therefore, you know, he wants to talk to her about it. Uh... So I was okay with it, but apparently the internet just did, like, I, I actually watched some of this happen. The internet imploded on him because he doesn't, like, as soon as he said it wasn't a romance thing, he then added to it. He's like, I don't think they were ever going to be romantically connected, and I don't think I, I don't think that would have been a good direction to go. And the internet went nuts because they want, like, a lot of people out there were shipping Ray and Finn oh. because of Force Awakens. And no, and frankly, I'm, I'm happy that they didn't because that always, I mean, let's just be honest, both Kylo and Rey, all, the, their relationships look really awkward. Yeah, but at least with Kylo and Rey, the tension is there. There's the, the, the tension is kind there of, there is yes. ro There's better romantic tension built between it's, it's, Kylo and Rey. It's what I like Rey. to call awkward tension. Yeah, that's, that's what romance yeah, is. No, is no, what, but what a, I mean is like, tension. it feels like two high school kids that are uh, two, two high school kids who are going to a dance for the first time and are completely nervous and don't know what the F to do. Yeah. That's that's what Ray and Kylo feels like to me. And once again, you're not lagging people. That's just the slowdown of the level. Yeah. Gee, many Christmas. Do, do, but yeah, no, do. I'm, I'm going to give major props to John Boyega. He handled all that controversy really well. And in the end, he's actually been been quoted as saying, like, he's OK with how how Finn ended. Uh, so, you know, he he feels like his, his character got a proper conclusion. So I'm OK with it. But last last Jedi, like he was I think he was just as pissed as everybody else, wasn't he? I don't know. <laughs> I think he was like he he didn't say anything right off the bat, but I think think they eventually did tell alls with him um shortly before rise of skywalker just saying like 
you know, how do you feel about how Last Jedi treated your character? So mm -hmm. there you go. Mm -hmm. So now that we've officially answered that, we are just in oh, time. Sword. We're at the end of the level, believe it or not, because it's oh. time to face the Rancor. And in my opinion, this is probably one of the better bosses of the game. Just simply because they kind of use Mode 7 mechanics to bring the Rancor to life. And so he looks very intimidating. <laughs> That's pretty cool looking. Yeah, right? Now, I mean, they obviously had to put in kind of default mechanics for a boss for him or for her. Sorry, we, we, we've seen the baby Rancors. And, and but nonetheless, I love how it looks. Completely disregard the the amount of slowdown that has to happen when the boss keeps summoning down rocks. Uh, this is going to be close. It's going to be down to the wire. If I had plasma, the, the Rancor would be dead right now. <laughs> At least you... Hey, you're nope, we did it. Wow, uh, that was pretty, you did pretty good there. And now when it lights up, you can see the full model. It, look, it I actually say it looks better than the movie one. That's me. All right, that's going to go ahead and do it for this episode. When we come back, it's time to... Uh, well, face the orange. Face the music, <laughs> as Luke and Han would do.